So, Andy Robinson. Yes, hello. The Alfa Romeo joining 750 Motor Club. Uh, what are the reasons behind that? Well, it's, it's a long story, but I think you probably sum it up in two main things. Um, one was cost. Our entry fees were substantially higher under the BRSCC, um, which a lot of our drivers weren't very happy about. Uh, I suppose the second thing was um, we didn't feel we were getting a lot of support. We'd had a problem for a couple of years with um, l low grid numbers. We were barely getting, you know, averaging about 16, 15 or 16, which isn't where we want to be. And we didn't feel we were getting any help at all in addressing that. In fact, some of the things the BRCC did, in our opinion, made things worse. So, um, so I started talking to other possible clubs about a year, well, a year ago now. And um, eventually we got a, an offer to join 750 and we were put it to our drivers 100% in favour. Not, not one not dissenting one. voice, no. Everyone wanted to, to come and join 750. Excellent news. And of course, the turnout for the first round here at Sneston is, uh, it seems to be fantastic, doesn't it? Yeah, it's 40% uh, up on our, our first race meeting last year. There may be a number of factors of that. I think people desperate to get out again after a lockdown, but you know, we've got, we've always had a lot of drivers, but a lot of them just dipped in and out all the time, which meant we have, have, we'd have 35 drivers, but average 15 on the grid, which was, but great turnout today. And we're hoping for the same again, obviously for the rest of the seasons. So. Yeah, of course. And you know, we've, I was thinking myself, the atmosphere in the paddock probably at the moment, the fact that it's the first round back after such a long break. I mean, have you been talking to some of the drivers? What's the atmosphere like with the team? Uh, they, they can't wait to get going. They're loving it. It's, you know, we've had one, qualifying, we've had one or two people with problems that make it, love it a little less, but that's motor racing, isn't it? Um, but everybody's really chuffed to be here and looking forward to it. I've been, you know, talking to people all through the winter and the lockdown period champing at the bit to get going so yeah the atmosphere is great excellent stuff well thank you very much for talking to us uh great to talk to you and yeah welcome to 750 motor club it's great to have you here thank you very much great to be here <laughs> so, cheers ian robertson starting to rise now uh, just making the red light goes on there you can see on the pit wall and away we go not a particularly brilliant start as we thought from the two front row men, nor the Mito either. That's a bit slow away. Um, but it's Barry McMahon from Graham Seeker as they head down towards Richie's for the first time. It's Tom Hill there almost touching the back of Seeker's car as they went into uh, turn one at Richie's as the Twin Spark Cup race gets underway as well. That's heading down towards Richie's corner now. But it's Barry McMahon leading from Graham Seeker in second place. Tom Hill is third, very sideways Tom Hill in third. And uh, then the rest. Without wanting to offend any of the drivers, I don't think anyone made a particularly great start, did they, Ian? So no. <laughs> all the uh, slower stuff was sort of negated. Uh, but everybody got away safely, and that is the main thing. So we can go racing for 20 minutes. Uh, Barry McMahon all by himself. It's a bit of flapping away, though, at the front of his car. Uh, then it's Seeger in second. It's St. Dubois there trying to come up the inside of the two uh, power trophy cars. But the sideways Tom Hill leads that in third overall. Yep, and it's Dave Messenger just behind him, isn't it, I think, in the 79 car? That, that time it was Seeger that got sideways, and he loses momentum out on out on those two uh, power trophy cars, goes up the inside, Tom Hill up to second overall. Oh, I think Seeger's got a problem, possibly, because there's another bit of a mistake there as well, as they went uh, through, through towards Corum Curve. And you've got the two uh, Fiat Punto Arbaths that are battling away as well. So there is Tom Hill. He is in second place then overall at the moment, from third place Dave Messenger, fourth place Vincent Dubois, fifth place is Graham Seeger, but Barry McMahon is almost in a different county as Dubois is getting past Messenger there as they came off Morris. Yes, so using that extra power of the modified class is going to go second, I suggest, by the time they get to Richie. So, a uh, huge gap up front, seven seconds for Barry McMahon over yeah, Vincent split, Dubois, who yeah, right gets that second place into Richie. He's yeah, yeah, down in fifth, so a good yeah, opening lap there from Dubois. Then Tom Hill getting away from Dave Messenger now. Uh, in that power trophy class as they make their way down into Wilson, a huge line and a spin now from Dubois. So it was a good first lap. <laughs> uh, lap two not gone so well in the middle of the road. Hopefully everybody will avoid it. Yeah, I think the, the sort of scatching and going one side or the other. There's Richard Thurbin in the Lancia Delta uh, Integrale, which is uh, just going through Chapman now, but yellow flags waved in the background with that car off at Chapman. And just as the Twin Spark cars 
are probably going to be heading there as well. And they were being led, I think, by Steve O'Brien at the end of the first lap. Notice the Mito's are pretty much at the back of the group, isn't it? Ricardo Lascelli, so he didn't have a great first lap. He didn't have a great start, did he? He was quite sluggish away from the line. We said none of them had a particularly great start, but his was particularly noteworthy. Now there's 86, which is Andrew Bork, and he has been a runner-up in the championship in the past. And he has just found his way past the number 21 car of Simon McPhee. So that's Andrew Bork, number 86. And he is one of the Twin Spark Cup cars, and is he actually the one that's now leading that class? Try and work that out. There's Barry McMahon, just gone through to complete his second lap. See the splitter flapping away there on that car. Right. Hopefully not a problem. Very low to the ground as well, isn't it? Oh. There's the Interpol, eh? There's the Mito, just in behind as well. Oh, and straight over the grass there goes number two. That's Gethin Llewellyn, who driving from Rygate, who's... Uh, got Murray's all wrong but managed to avoid too much damage and has been able to, to rejoin the race. He was running in 16th position I think. Initially he gained a load of places there but I think he'll lose them again down the centre straight. Yeah, there's the 55 car which is uh, that of uh, Scott Austin in the Alpha 155, the driver from Watford. This is the XEN Brookfield car. Got a new Fiat 5 cylinder 20 valve turbo engine for, uh, for this year. Graham Seeger goes second there down the uh, Bentley Straight getting that away from Tom Hill in different classes they are though. Uh, Tom Hill leads his category by about a second over Dave Messenger. He hops over the kerb there on the inside and suggests he's pulling away from Messenger. Then you've got Scott Austin uh, there chasing him in the four of five class by though in that retro one by five. Steady. Uh, so there, there is uh, Seeger. He's making his way through. He's now already sort of a quarter of a minute behind the race leader uh, Barry McMahon. And yeah, I think, yeah, looking at Arsenal, I think it's actually um, Andrew Bork leading the uh, Twin Spark Cup rather than what's showing us our screen as Paul Keynes. I think that's actually uh, Andrew Bork, isn't it? Kevin Llewellyn's on the grass again, so that's twice in at least two miles. Uh, so perhaps he's done some rally crossing in his past, he's not been doing it today. Uh, Kevin Llewellyn was 16th still at the end of the previous lap. It's a good battle that he has won. He's head for number six, which is Simon Cresswell as they make their way uh, through Murray's to complete another lap. And is it the battle for the lead of the class? I don't think it is, because I think that Carl Schengel last screen of 75 Paul Keynes is actually, I think that must be, uh, Andrew Ball. Uh, so there's a, a glitch on the timing there, possibly, is the, what's going on there. But here's Gethin Clewellyn. Uh, and this is the car that John Billingsley took to a couple of wins here, I think, last season in the Twin Spark Cup class. But he's got just right behind him now, number six, which is Simon Creswell in another 156. Under break now for Wilson, and then they will turn their way into the left hand kink at Chapman that brings them onto the Bentley Straight. Steve. Not a lot too much to choose between them. Steve O'Brien lost places on that previous lap, so he was ahead of them, and now he's a couple of places behind. Uh, as they make their way down the Bentley Strait. The Mito is struggling still, isn't it? Ricardo Lacelli made a 13th. He's not really making the progress, unfortunately. Here are this group of twin spark cars being led by Geffen Llewellyn over Simon Cresswell, two ahead of six. Meanwhile, the leader, Barry McMahon, has defeated lap four, one minute 19.8. He's new fastest lap of the race. The back to the battle heading towards the end of lap number 23, you see there, of James Ford. Yeah. Uh, still got another couple of attempts or so to get the lap record away from Eddie Hawkins, 119.593, the lap record from uh, several years ago. Again, the 200 circuit, not actually that used that often these days at, at Snetterton, so the Alphas went away from it all that often. But look at this, a challenge now for uh, the position within the Twin Spark Cup class because number six, Simon Creswell, trying to get alongside Ethan Thwellen as they come along the start and finish straight dives back into the toe you've got Simon uh, you've got James Ford right in there as well another regular uh, front runner in the Twin Spark Cup class as they turn their way through Rich's corner now and up towards uh, Wilson uh, changed just a little bit further back and that was the battle involving I think Steve O'Brien and uh, Richard Ford Geffen Llewellyn's car is very dramatic through the corner so that's the setup that's on pitching the car sideways at every opportunity but he's keeping it on the tarmac keeping it ahead of Simon Cresswell meanwhile here are the two pinchers Chris McPhee is ahead of Simon currently but good battle between them 
Yeah, always uh, following some good entertainment, of course, these the Type 4 Hydrogen had its own one mate series in the Republic of Ireland. Tom Allen, a few of these cars have, uh, have made their way over and uh, they make very good value budget uh, tin top racing uh, and very welcome they are within the Alpha Arrow Championship. As, uh, not guess they do score points, as but uh, there was no alphas there that we did it. So we've had, we've had about seven minutes or so of this race now. I've got black and white driving standards flag going out to somebody. We'll try and work out who that is in just a moment. The board is out there, but we can't see the number on it at the moment. Richard Thurbin not making the progress that he would have hoped in the last year, is he? Made it into the top 10, 1 minute 26, so his pace would could put him back towards the top five. So perhaps he's getting quicker as he gets that car back up to speed. And he's right behind the McPhees as they turn their way into Wilson. They hop the inside uh, rear wheel, the rear tyre off the ground. As it, the car goes hard right through the right hand. And now you see the power of the Lancia that will accelerate alongside the two Pintos. Uh, great sight, isn't it, as well, in that, in that particular livery. This was originally, though, a 1990 road car. And it was imported from Italy back in 2001, this Lancia. It was taken off the road in 2015 because of, guess what, rust <laughs> that typically afflicted the, uh, the Lancias, but it was rebuilt by uh, John Shields, who just involved the BTCC Alpha team, of course, in the past, and uh, which has been racing for the last two or three years uh, in a variety of different uh, categories. It's absolutely fantastic, isn't it? It's not past the Pinchos, though, so I'd suggest it's not running as they would like, but it's running, so that's uh, more of improvement they would follow by, I think, you know, by the slowest car of anybody. Yeah, and uh, it was uh, a winner here last year, as I say, so uh, fortunes uh, fluctuating somewhat. The line they come to complete the sixth lap of this race. Barry McMahon now half a minute ahead of the race. Not going to be far away from lap in the field, I don't think, Ian. <laughs> uh, here comes the uh, Lancer again, Thurbin. Trying to come up the inside of Simon McPhee, gets him, and he looks too to the inside of Chris McPhee, but he can't quite do that. Of course, that car will be in four wheel drive, is very good off the corners. But today, the acceleration at the end of the straight in isn't what it would be like it to be. Certainly not, no, not, not, uh, not quite where it should be. Quick rundown on the order, because we are about halfway through this race. It's being led by number 57, Barry McMahon, from number 5, Graham Seeker. 55, Graham, oh, sorry, Scott Austin is in third place. One, Tom Hill, the reigning champion, is fourth. Fifth, number 79, Dave Passenger. Sixth is 88, Vincent Dubois. Seventh is 80, Andrew Roman. Eighth is number 22, Chris McPhee. Ninth, number 90, Richard Thurbin. And tenth, number 21, Simon McPhee. But those are chopping and changing all the time. Yeah, Thurbin's dropped now behind George Osborne, too. So this lap particularly not great as well. George Osborne in the Alfa Romeo 75. They're going ahead of Thurbin. So Thurbin, who was looking to get eighth to begin the lap, now dropped back to the left. There's the uh, Alfa Romeo 75. It's George Osborne. Um, working his way now up towards Coram Curve, and then they're just ahead of that car with uh, a wrongly showing transponder. We think that's Andrew Gore, who could be the twin spot. Yeah, and I think he was leading it. We did see him in that sort of cycle a little bit earlier on. It's a long way ahead of the other, which is 20 plus seconds. Yep, in the well in second, James Ford third, and Simon Cresswell in fourth. Now George Osborne's going to try and get past Simon McPhee on the way up towards Richie. You see the sight there um, of that car that we were talking about, the Andrew Bork car. Uh, meanwhile, Osborne didn't get through much past McPhee, and now he's under pressure from Richard Furbin, who's recovering again. Down towards Indeed. Wilson. Yeah, he is, and he's just uh, attacking that 75 of George Osborne. I don't like wins at Van Hash and Silverstone in 2019 in the number 34 car. Now he's going to re-challenge Simon McPhee again. See if he can make it work this time. He has a bit more power. Uh, Richard Thurbin trying to do similar. George Osborne is in the same class as the Fiat's. Thurbin in the modified class. So they're all power trophy cars around them. And Simon McPhee loses out because he loses two positions. Yeah, so... Oh, and something trailing off the back of... Uh, is that uh, James Ford's car there? 23, I think. Um, I don't know what that was. Bizarre, wasn't it? Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not completely minded, but uh, yeah, it's strange. But he's trailing something, so I wonder if he'll get the meatball flag. The Mito's in the pit lane, so problems continue there for Riccardo Maselli. Looks like he's pulled off into retirement. We're heading into the second half of this race. The opening round of 
the off the road championship. Meanwhile, three abreast across the line. This is the battle for what is, I think, eighth position. Chris McFee in the Punto loses out to the more powerful cars around him. The uh, Alfa Romeo 75 has Richard Furby going right round the outside. The Furby's passed them all now in a lap. So where, what, a lap or two ago, the car was struggling, it's come back on again. He's found, found the on switch by, by the looks of it, hasn't he? Because that's a sudden dramatic change in performance. George Osborne making his way ahead of those Fiat's as well. And then it's Barry McMahon just behind them, isn't it? As we watch uh, the Mito uh, in the pit lane, unfortunately. And that's out of the race. And there's Graham Seeger just going for a shot. He's still in second position. And Tom Hill still third, I think. There's the Mito. Is that heading back out onto track? It is. Yes, it is. So checking out the window. We haven't seen much of this car in the race, have we? It's the race leader, Barry McMahon's Alfa Romeo 156. All touring car spec, making its way down uh, through the ball power. Now he's we have diffuser flapping on that car too now as well. Uh, I think it's running okay. Last lap, one minute 21, a couple of seconds away. But he's about to lap that car we battled with here just a year ago in the Richard Thurbin last year. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we won the second race here last year, I believe. And there is the black and orange flag, uh, and I think that must be to James Ford as we as possible for the number 23 car with bits dangling and trailing behind it, rather dangerous, and will need to be attended to. So there's Barry McMahon, who has completed, what, 10 laps now? Yeah, and he is on his way through, which is once more. He's put a lap then on. Um, Richard Thurbin, he's putting a lap now on Andy, Andy Inman as well, number 80. The, the Thurbin car going much quicker now though, in a 1 minute 25, which will put him up sort of with the podium position cars. So I suspect if it continues in that direction, they get past Andy Inman for seventh very shortly. Yeah, Andy Inman in the Revs Alpha uh, prepared car, the long standing competitor in the uh, Alpha Mode Championship. He lost that place to Thurbin, who was a couple of seconds behind at the line. So the Lancia are really going strong now. It certainly seems that way. Now there is, uh, well there's six, which is Creswell, and he's just behind. That is the James Ford car that was trailing something, wasn't it? Which doesn't now appear to be. So whether that's just dropped off, I'm not quite sure. It looks like there's a wheel mark down the door of number six, Simon Creswell, doesn't there? Which suggests that there might have been contact at some point uh, along his way during the course of this race. And the, Bianco prepared machine. It's pretty dramatic that uh, twin spark category. They're half a minute behind Andrew Borg, but I presume Borg's still in that category. He's a long way ahead of the rest um, as they make their way down the uh, Bentley Strait, being led this gap battle by uh, Geffen the Wedding, just being lapped by the second place overall, Graham Seeger. Uh, then, if you say James Ford there in 23 behind, but that's been a race long battle between this group of cars. A really good battle within the twin spark category. Three quarters of the way through this race now, 20 minutes uh, race, 15 minutes have already gone by. We're getting towards the end of the uh, first of two races today for these cars. Double header to start the season. We've got a triple header at Anglesey in a couple of months' time, as we mentioned. And there's Gethin Clewellyn, just behind him, James Ford, behind him, Simon Creswell. And head out of Murray's and on to the start to finish straight once again. And that is probably the black and orange flag for the car that we've just seen, James Ford. A bit now, but I think the reason for it is probably gone. But if it's still being shown, he does still need to call to the pits. There he is, turning into Richard. They're all being closed in on by Richard Ford, car number nine. So that is going to be a four car battle. They make their way down to the Wilson hairpin for, for what they, these cars are on their 11th lap of the race. They keep tight up over the curb. They're soon to be lapped by the third place car of Scott Austin. In fourth and fifth place together, Tom Hill has got Vincent Dubois uh, all over the back of him, but they're in different classes. And Tom Hill's still got a decent lead in the Power Trophy over Dave Messenger. Meanwhile, in, the two Pintos are still battling away. <laughs> they have been all race long, haven't they? Chris McPhee ahead of Simon McPhee at the moment. They are going to be to complete their tenth lap now, I think. Yes, they are. And so possibly 11 laps now but uh, it's almost side by side into to Bridges corner great uh, fight going on in the Southgate racing entered and uh, tended cars down towards the Wilson heaven they go Simon Toronto outbreak Chris as they 
go around Wilson. He was on the outside line, though, and he couldn't do anything about that. Really evenly matched, and it would, be, it would have been great, probably, back in the day, not that many years ago, to see a full grid of these cars racing around Mondello. Sure, they'll be back together in no time at all as they make their way down here into Brundle. Actually, I think they're already back together again. So, not sure if these two cars have ever seen a party in, in their history of their racing <laughs> life. <laughs> Certainly not been out of the same shot in this race, have they? So, it's been, uh, it's been pretty close between them. And they are competing for the final place in the top ten overall as well. So, there is uh, a certain amount of pride to be, uh, to be won here. Vincent Dubois has got fourth now, by the way, ahead of Tom Hill. As you said, though, he, there he is. He's in a different class. He's a class above. He's in the modified class. And Tom Hill in the power trophy. Tom still looking good in that. About seven or eight seconds clear of Dave Messenger. Uh, Dubois has been lapping quicker than Scott Austin ahead. Possibly the, uh, Austin was getting past that uh, twin spark battle that may have been the reason for the slower lap. Uh, we'll see if we've well, only a few couple or three laps to go if Dubois can do anything about that seven second gap to Scott Austin. So the, the Twin Spark guys have all split up now, haven't they? So it looks like that pitch drop has been made by uh, James Ford, so that's dropped him away, and it's allowed Jeff and Llewellyn to get away from Richard Ford, who's got ahead now, has he, or Simon Cresswell? Yeah, there's there's James Ford taking out of the pit lane. I'm not sure there wasn't anything to, to sort out in the end, but anyway, he's been uh, released by the scrutiny, he's back into the race, but that will be a frustration for him, because it will effectively put him pretty much more to the back of the back of the fields now, we've had those couple of retirements, Jonathan Tortellini uh, and uh, Riccardo Lascelli. Look who's side by side here. <laughs> Fancy that, and they were trying to do it all the way around from there, weren't they? But uh, no, didn't quite work. So it's still 22, which is uh, Chris, ahead of 21, which is Simon. Great scrap that they are having. But um, Barry McMahon now working his final lap of the race. He's uh, less than a minute away from the time element of this race coming to an end. He crossed the line last time. I think these guys will have at least one more lap to enjoy their fantastic battle before the end. Heading out of where he's down to the start to finish straight the go. Great to see a number of viewers down there at uh, Murray Zoom with MSB now allowing visitors to watch uh, race meetings. It's great to see a number of people here today at Snetton enjoying the 750 Motor Club action. So Barry McMahon well on his way towards the line. There he is. He's uh, just making his way towards Corn at this point, isn't he? Bomb hole towards Corn. He will go. Barry McMahon in the white and green uh, Alpha. 156 turbo but strap going on just behind him there's Gethin Clewellen who's been lapped again by the race leader Barry McMahon probably lapping well within himself he's done a best of a 119.88 he's not threatened the AD Hawkins lap record 119.593 he's out of the final corner he's up to the line check a flag is made ready check a flag goes out now and Barry McMahon wins round one of the 2020 Alfa Romeo Championship just behind him on the road as that second Battle within the Twin Spark category that went to get with the Wellen, head of Richard Ford, driving pressure on Steve O'Brien uh, amongst that battle too, which is a great long scrap. Meanwhile, the rest of the field comes through, and of course, we'll have to wait a little while for the second place car, which should be Graham Seeger, who is comfortably in that position in the Alpha Mary GTV, the only one of that model in the race. Austin, who was slowly being pulled by Vincent Dubois, but I don't think that cut off anything. And then we Tom Hill, uh, who in his category, the Power Trophy class, he was well, nearly 10 seconds ahead of Dave Messenger by the end. And third in that category, Andy Inman in the 156. He's got there ahead of a couple of 156s in the Power Trophy class. And finally got Graham Seager across the line in second place, 55 seconds behind the winner. So just check the rest of that order is as we expected it to be. I think it was James Ford after his pit stop. And there comes Scott Austin, I think, in third place, we're pleased with that. And then Vincent Dubois in fourth, and we'll wait for Tom Hill to uh, kickstart his championship defence with a victory 
No, in fact, it was a lap down with a victory yeah, in the Power Trophy class. Yeah, I think he was. I think he's completed his race. And I think also uh, Andrew Bork, who we think has won the um, uh, Twin Spark Cup. Uh, we didn't see much of him during that race. And did we... I uh, think he was the winner of that class, although I think there was a glitch on the timing which had him down as uh, somebody else, but uh, these things happen early in the season. So, quick run down there, and it was a win for number 57, Barry McMahon. Second was number five, which was Graham Seeger, and third was number 55, Scott Austin. That's how it was in the modified class. In the uh, Power Trophy, it was number one, Tom Hill, from number 79, Dave Messenger, and 80, Andrew Inman. And we think in the Twin Spark Cup it was uh, the car of Andrew Bork that took the victory. Number 86 from in second place, Skethin, Llewellyn, number two and third, number nine in the end, Richard Ford. So that's the way of things in the opening race of the day for our from our, uh, championship. They do have another race later on. I can see already that Barry McMahon's car has been uh, brought into uh, pit lane, and you can see our intrepid reporter Anthony Jordan moving in, uh, ready to have a word in just a moment. So I think we're probably just about ready to go down there now. So uh, next voice you hear will be that of Anthony Jordan talking to Barry McMahon. What was that? Whoa, Barry, what was that? You you left the field. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, the car's going really, really well this year. We've had it uh, rebuilt over the winter. Obviously, we've had a few additional months and um, very, very happy. Uh, I think I've got a small problem with the splitter, so it was a bit of understeer. Uh, but ultimately, we'll get that repaired for the next race and see if we can break a lap record. I did say, as you pulled in there, there was a, a mighty knock from the, uh, the splitter as you uh, just pulled up here. It is hanging off on one side, but... Like I say, even with that slight bit of damage, pulling such a huge gap from second place was incredible. Yes, thanks very much. Uh, the, the guys from uh, Owen Developments and uh, uh, Horsepower Factory have built a really good car. So uh, very, very impressed. Excellent. And of course, it's your first time back with 750 Motor Club. You've just come from, uh, obviously, the BRSEC. How is it comparing? Uh, Ultimately, it's uh, not a lot of difference. Um, very happy with what we've got so far, and uh, long may continue. I think we're very happy with uh, the 750 Motor Club. Excellent stuff. Well, again, huge congratulations on a dominant win, and uh, best of luck for the second race. Thank you very much. Catch you soon. Cheers. Yeah, cheers.